John Sebastian Helmkin, do you swear by Almighty God that the evidence you shall give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I'll go to mother and complain to her of this. Well, didn't I tell you, daughter, to forgive and to forget? Your father sowed his wild oats, but still you must not fret. Your father may be father to all the boys, but still he's not the man who sired you, so marry who you will. <laughs> so it's stuff like that, right, that's circulating through the streets of Victoria. The play, um, the play is called A Queer Trial. Uh, and it's part of a course, Theater 311, and it's being funded very generously by the UVic Office of Community University Engagement. And so the goal of the project actually is to create uh, a work of musical theater, which, uh, or a musical play, it's really not a musical, it's a musical play which uh, researches a historical problem, right, and brings that to life, uh, but does so through community engagement. And so all through this process, we have engaged with the community uh, as part of our research and the development of this piece, right? We've consulted with local experts and historians on Bastion Square, uh, Black Victoria community, Jewish Victoria community, the legal community, uh, Aboriginal communities, and so on. We are, we are out there in the community researching this play. And then, of course, as the culmination of this course, this whole research project, we're going to be taking this beautiful message of tolerance and humanity right into the heart of the community by performing it in Bastion Square, by performing this historical play on the very site, on the very earth where the events originally took place in 1860. Also reading off of the original script on what are the lines there and what is needed here for the music. Like what can the music say from this? Because like basic musical theater rule, if something's more important, then you sing it. Yeah, we've, we've avoided going, let's add like a nice violin line here. But at the same time, we've really started hitting like, okay, well, what, what can like a chorus of voices be doing to sound like an organ? Or what can a chorus of voices be doing to just sound like a rumbling? Or can people make a beat with their foot? You know, that's, that's really what uh, pops into my head. If one vote cannot be swung, the whole jury will be hung. <gasps> So we wanted to try and find that balance. Mm -hmm. Like what can we create our own, but what can we keep traditional? Uh, I, I, a lot of the BC history that surrounds uh, the gold rushes uh, that that uh, miners were following, not only around British Columbia but around North America, and people were driving cows to this area because they were feeding the miners who were searching for gold, uh, and all of that led me to uncover um, stories about First Nations that were, of course, the people who've been here for thousands of years. Anyways, that's really interesting too because again, the fourth wall doesn't really exist because people can walk away from you and step up to you, take photos with you while you're performing, while you're doing other stuff like that. And I find it just to be really, just really engaging. What I find really interesting about this, on the subject of, I mean, this is a this is a research project, but it's also a creative activity, right? And people often in their minds separate those two things and think on one hand there's research and on the other hand there's creativity. But what you learn when you do a historical drama, when you write a historical drama and try to br discover a, 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 the, the historical truth through theater, is that actually there are always so many gaps in the historical record that the only way to solve those questions is actually to try to get these people on stage, to try to get them into a space with each other. Is that a story or is that a story?